some time ago, we took a look at the fantastic mass effect at Out of Bounds Secrets and how the game works off camera, where the player can not normally see. So if you want to watch that episode, feel free to click the link in the description. However, now it's time to continue our journey as we take a look at the Out of Bounds Secrets and behind the scenes developer tricks of the arguably better, in some ways, if not just as good, Mass Effect 2. As always, be aware that there will be spoilers during the video as we cover the game from start to finish. Talking about the start, as always, there's no better place to begin than the title screen, and what a great looking title screen this is. Though there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. In fact, this is a bit of an optical illusion. As we remove the text and fly the camera out, we see the wreckage that the camera is sitting inside, looking out from, is all 3D, but the background itself, believe it or not, is 2D, and it's much the same story once we enter the menu screen, which is floating quite nearby. We'll see more developer tricks like this throughout the video. One of the first parts to the game is the prologue in which we see the Normandy SR1 attacked by the Collectors. During these scenes, because there is now a massive hole in the side of the Normandy, we get our first glimpse out into space, and it looks amazing with this huge planet in the background. Moving the camera gives us a good idea of just how huge the skyboxes and the objects in space are compared with the playable areas of map. We also get our first introduction to the elusive map. Then see to it that we don't lose him. Now, throughout the game, Shepard comes into contact with this NPC, as I said, known as the elusive map. And in several scenes when speaking to him, we see this amazing backdrop where he usually sits. I just quickly want to show some out of bounds secrets about these scenes that are pretty interesting. For a start, you may have already guessed that the huge star in the background much like the title screen, is indeed 2D. However, what's really interesting about this is that some of the other mission maps are not too far away. So, for instance, if we fly the camera beyond the star, we find this blackout box that's there to separate the two scenes. Then, as we continue, we find the wreckage of the Normandy SR1 that features in the following parts of the prologue. This is also the case with the later mission Freedom's Progress. However, during this mission, the Elusive Man is in a separate, smaller skybox within the Freedom Progress's skybox, which is clearly way, way bigger out of bounds from the map. After the opening credits, Shepard awakens on an operating table. Now, most of this scene takes place from a first-person perspective. Looking from a different angle, though, you may notice that Shepard's head seems to be missing. We have seen this during a number of different videos covered on the channel, and one of the reasons for this is to stop the camera clipping through the head of the character whilst it moves around during an animation. Otherwise, you may see something like this. The question is, where is Shepard's head? Well, in this case, it can be found inside his own body. Pretty freaky to look at, but it does do the job. Earlier, I mentioned Freedom's progress. Towards the end of the mission, we are attacked by a mech. Now, the cutscenes we see just before the fight are rendered in real time, which gives us a great opportunity to see how character models appear and move around during these types of scenes. Those quarians never stood a chance. This is going to be one tough son of a bitch to take down. There are other great examples of this too, for instance, when we catch up to Thane, as well as many others that I could include, but it would just take way too long. Dealing with this nuisance, you and I are going to... <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. 
Though quickly, I just wanted to show the boss fight with the giant Thresher more, just in case you wondered what was lurking beneath the ground. However, one of my favourites is during the final mission, we get this scene that shows the collectors are trying to break through a door. The funny thing about this is, as you'll see in the background, they are on the same side of the door as the whole crew. Only from the camera shots, you'd never know it. A great bit of camera trickery. I just want to look more into the subject of skyboxes, or sky domes as a lot of them are now, and give an example of how huge they can be compared to the size of the playable areas of map. Also, what happens if we go outside a sky dome? Say for instance at Amiga, when we do go out, we get this odd stretching effect of whatever is rendered on screen. This is because normally, of course, we wouldn't be able to see beyond the sky dome, so nothing is out here except there can't be absolutely nothing because we're out here with the camera. So what happens is the very last pixels of the sky dome or whatever else is rendered get stretched out across the void and it gives us this crazy effect. Some maps, however, don't have a sky box. This mainly happens if we can only see out from one side of the map. In this case, these segments of the levels may have a huge backdrop like this one at the Citadel. There is one instance of this that is particularly clever. On our way to find Thane, we see this mixture of pre-rendered and real-time cutscenes. During the real-time segments, if we move the camera out of bounds, we can see this awesome backdrop which wraps around the position of the shuttle. I do love to see developer tricks like this in action, as it shows just how creative they are. One of the places we explored during the first Mass Effect episode was the Citadel, so I'm not going to spend too much time here as the main area, the Presidium, is much the same, only we don't go into as many rooms. In fact, we don't spend too much time here at all during the main quest. One thing I did find that was pretty interesting is how during the scenes when we speak with the Council, whilst we only see these holograms of the characters, the models can actually be found out of bounds, hidden inside a blacked out cube, and this isn't the only time this happens. Whenever we are viewing a hologram on screen of a character, this is the case. The real model is often hidden out of bounds or in another part of the map, which means in this case, we are in fact seeing a live feed of the characters just as the elusive man is so-called seen in the game. Pretty cool stuff. Of course, one of the main aspects of Mass Effect is navigating the galaxy and visiting the various regions and planets across the Milky Way. Now, Mass Effect 2 uses a similar system to the original, though I will just briefly go over it again for those who may not have seen my original video. To get to the galaxy map, we have to go out of bounds from the Normandy, through the first sky dome that surrounds it, into a much larger outer sky dome. Then way below we can find four other domes that contain the sections of the galaxy map. Top left is the system that we're in, in this case Sol. Top right is the last planet we visited, as you can see here, I went to Jupiter. Bottom right is where a nebula we're flying through can be found, like say for instance if we visited Valhallen Threshold. Then last but not least, the bottom left is the Milky Way itself, when we zoom out as far as can be. Also, a couple of interesting points, the local cluster system does have a map in the bottom right dome, though we can't travel outside of Sol whilst in this local system, so I'm not entirely sure why this is here as we never see it, let alone use it. Last but not least, I'm going to cover some of the final mission and the end boss. To start with, here's a strange out of bounds find that I came across, and I'm not entirely sure why these are here. Maybe it's some sort of cut content. 
However, way outside of the map, I found two collector models floating in an air pause. Nothing too unusual, except here we can find they have a selection box attached to them, just like objects that we activate within the maps. As I said, I have no idea why this is, so feel free to comment if you have any suggestions for this one. Finally, onto the end game boss, and this thing is again huge compared with Shepard and the rest of the human sized character models. During the fight, it sometimes dips below the platform where we can't see it, though the real reason we can't see it is not only because it dips below the platform, but it shrinks down to a minute size, and I just about managed to capture the footage of this happening, albeit I had to slow it down because it happens fairly quickly. Once beaten, it falls below the map before disappearing, however it's then held out of bounds for the final scenes along with the elusive man in another holding box. Oh and just in case you were wondering about the final Normandy scenes, they do take place on the Normandy but only the cargo hold and the cockpit is included. When I see out of bounds on these games, it always kind of reminds me of how a film set is built and it never ceases to amaze me how the developers come up with the tricks to get these games to work like they do. So I just kind of want to say a thank you to them for the hard work they put into these games that I cover on the channel. Also on that note, it has taken me nearly two months to put this video together so I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, it would be great if you could leave a like and let me know if you have a game that you want covering on the channel in the comments or on my social media platforms. I do keep a track of suggested games and the more votes a game gets, the more likely I am to cover it. However, that is it for this one. Take care and I'll catch you soon.